Hello everybody, welcome to my garden. My name is Tony Smith and today we're going to take a look at a pest that is causing havoc at the moment amongst all us gardeners. What am I talking about? The humble caterpillar. Yes, I'm going to give you today about 10 or 11 organic methods to hopefully stem the, the assault and the, the, the hardship that it's bringing with. So before we start as well, let us know in the comments. I was speaking to Mark, one of the allotment holders down there, and Mark seen this. And, and he said it's about as big as your finger, as fat as your finger, and it reared up like a snake. Now I can only think it's a, some sort of moth. But what is it and how do you get rid of it? Does it, does it come totally eat all your, you know, is this the, like the, the dominant species of this kind of caterpillar world? Let us know in the comments below. So on a, a normal summer's day, there is just a multitude of cabbage white, especially up here, cabbage white butterflies floating around. It looks almost idyllic. You know, all these like lovely little creatures fluttering about on your garden it's a picture of summer and it's the picture of like vitality in your garden your plants are looking healthy you've got lovely little <laughs> critters floating around there but lay the eggs and the damage the their offspring the caterpillars can do is just sometimes devastating so i want to give you some tips and some tricks that i use that other people use to just stem that you know like like i mentioned before that assault on your garden because it is so upsetting you know to come and just like realize and like day after day and you, you can't seem to stop it so there is some methods but do think about that you're not going to eradicate <laughs> I mean, it's best just to like limit the, the the damage damage limitation is probably what the best description we can do so one of the best ways I think personally is netting but it's not you know infallible and they will get in there and it all depends what type of net you know the if you're trying to stop the the cabbage white the butterflies getting in you'll be surprised what they what holes they can crawl into if they know you've got your loose your, your lovely juicy you know cabbage on the inside I've got some netting there, you can see that green netting, you can see I suppose by the size of my thumb, that's not going to protect my cabbages from the butterfly, they're going to just fold the wings and get in there. But this here is, it's like a, like a, a builder's netting, you know what I mean, like a, a scaffolding netting, and it works a treat. And yes, you might get the odd one, but you're not going to get hammered, you know there's, there is like a little line you can see there where that could get in and that's probably the only place you could get in but from like a perspective of what netting's good the smaller the hole the better so the, the reason why i'm actually even doing this video as well is because i give it to a I did a, a video a couple of days ago, a few days ago, and unbeknownst to me, but everybody else spotted it, on one of on my actual cauliflower, there was a huge caterpillar and you can kind of see they're starting to you know the, the little telltale signs are starting to happen so this is the whole reason why I can, I, for myself as well I'm beyond the ball and try and limit what's going on now what a lot of folk do mind you and it's something that I haven't done or I've done to some degree is just go through your vegetables and pick off the caterpillars do you know what I mean either pick them off and destroy them there and then and the best probably in a, in a bucket of soapy water oh, just squash your fingers bucket of soapy water they'll, they'll drown in that but just pick them off and you know like just a little inspection and i see quite a number of people just doing that you know we're not growing the amount of cabbages for retail so what cabbages you got you might be able to kind of just go through and just check and but you'll have to kind of keep on checking every other day or so just to make sure <laughs> butterfly because like i say it's just constant another one is basically plant enough to take that hit do you know what i mean have some sacrificial cabbages some sacrificial vegetables that you know you know they're the ones you know let them have them ones give them something that they kind of really like and hopefully the you know your your vegetables are 
not going to be that bothered. There is certain certain plants that caterpillars love, and this is where I've been letting mine. So I don't know if you can just see over there the flowers, the, the bonny flowers and the sturgeons. So I've just been letting them go because caterpillars and butterflies love that. So if you've got this in your garden, the sturgeons, just let them look at it and see the butterflies are all. Let it come because that's a great little place, a great little haven for them to stay there and off your plants. Another one, which unfortunately I am not, I cannot do it, but livestock, chickens, hedgehogs, things like, you know what I mean? Let them run around your garden if you've got the chickens. They absolutely love the caterpillars. So, like I say, on this plot, we're not allowed livestock, but you never know, there might be hedgehogs wandering around, but they have to climb up. <laughs> They'd have to climb up my rear's beds. But if you've got chickens or, you know, let the wildlife in, there you go, one more. It's all about battle limitations. Another little trick that a lot of folks do is companion planting. Plant strong smelling plants next to your, your cabbages, your brassicas, your sprouting broccoli, anything. Plant in between the likes of sage, peppermint, you know, lavender. All these strong smelling plants would be great. And I'll just show you, and that, this is what I should have done in this bed would have been lovely to just fill it out with all them, you know, because you're beneficial, you're, you're, you're getting them, them herbs anyways. But hopefully, you know, you're, you're not going to get ravaged by the, the caterpillar. And I'm just, you know, with this bed especially, I'm just waiting. <laughs> hopefully it's not going to come, but you never know. The, the, the kind of onslaught might start all of a sudden one, one night and I've missed it. Another little tip, and I've, I've read about it, which is, you know, is bring in the birds, bring in the wildlife birds. And what I would intend to do as well is just use, and that, these are actually platforms that I use to put my cameras on when I'm recording. But if I can bring in some bird feed and just encourage the birds to come as well, hopefully they'll carry on to, <laughs> to the to the hungry caterpillars as well. So there are a couple of sprays you can use, and I guess the, the most basic organic one is crush up some garlic, some chili flakes, and really get, you know, boil it up, get that steeping, and spray that on your plants, you know, like sieve it all out, and spray that on your plants. Whether it's totally effective, but like I say, it's all about just trying to halt. You know, you, you don't mind a little bit of damage, but if it'll just do a little bit of good, it's still better than anything else. So they are, there is a couple of chemicals out there and I'm be using them quite, quite a lot this, this year. This is my kind of main strategy for not eradicating them caterpillars, but trying my best to. The first one is neem, neem oil. And this mixture here is an actual, it's already kind of made up with a little bit of soapy water and you just add it to more water. And it gives, it like, like smothers the actual little caterpillar, you know, and, and stops them. But, now there's a warning here as well, I've got bees and it'll kill the bees as well. So make sure, just if you have bees or anything like that, that it's a nighttime spray. So all your bees are in nice and safe and they're tucked away in bed before you start spraying with the neem oil. So I think it's regarded, you know, with within the kind of the, the gardeners and you know people that kind of know their stuff that the number one product that everyone kind of use is bt and i'll try and say it <laughs> bacillus thuringiensis and bt for short maybe i'm not saying it right but this is a powder you mix it up and it really gives them like a, a gripe and tummy ache and eventually it'll kill them as well and it's organic so this is my two recommended for tackling this onslaught. Mix it up and, you know, you dilute it in the water, mix it up to your, your certain ratio and just cover it on. And you probably probably want to do about, say, at the most, maybe six or seven times over your vegetables over that growing season with the BT. The, the neem oil is about the same as well. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to kind of too much. And like I mentioned, just be careful you know, with other wildlife, make sure you're doing it at night time as well, because it'll just suffocate everything. So, a few little tips there to hopefully stem this, what on first appearance is an idyllic looking garden with butterflies floating all over. 
but the damage they do that the, you know the caterpillars it's just sometimes can wipe out and shred you know like young brassicas and especially now when you're wanting to to get them started get them going for the winter and for the spring so that's it i hope you enjoyed it do put some links if you've got any tips any advice do you know what i mean is it worth simply just picking off the the caterpillars or is that just no good at all let us know anything have you tried the bt have you tried the neem oil let us know in the comments below look after yourselves take good care